The gif in my party was a little upset because I was romancing her, and I just uh, switched over to romancing the um, the drow after a very intimate mind meld. I feel like this is too much information. <laughs> Everyone watching is like, "Hey, we don't we don't actually need to know this." Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing, bud. Gaming! We're talking about gaming! <laughs> this is a gaming stream with the games! My party relationship with her is still really high, a beagle. Despite the fact that we just broke up. It makes me think that I should be dissexing all of my companions. And that way, our relationship meter will be high, and they'll always do what I want. <laughs> sounds, sounds toxic as shit. <laughs> Yeah, just like real life. Oh, she went up. Hey, Preve, six to 49 months. We just have to, like, grist killer yog, right? And hope we don't die. Pretty fucking miserable. The fact that they just, like, reset their strangle root and they're like, yeah, cool. Kind of makes me feel like they've got another yog handy. Maybe not. Not feeling especially ahead. The other hand's all land. Oh no, they're tapping things. What was the companion that grew on me the most? Um... So after the end of my last run, I was kind of sick of Shadowheart. She did, like, the opposite of Grow on Me. My first run was very Shadowheart-based. This run, uh, Lysel and Minthara were the two that grew on me the most, for sure. So we could play Yogg. We could also work Cutthroat. I guess Yogg also answers Cutthroat. Oh yeah, Carlac's very consistently awesome. She kind of she kind she kind of bails if you do a lot of murdering. If you get a little murdery, she's like, "Eh, not my thing." Yeah, Styrian's awesome. I heard that a lot of the animation, a lot of like the gesticulations and stuff that the characters do was, you know, the actual voice actors in the studio, like they put like motion sensors on them. To, like model it and when Asterion's talking and gesticulating like you can like definitely imagine a voice actor and like <laughs> doing the same stuff it's really natural really human apparently shadow hearts like weird little head bob was actually the voice actors
your dream job is voice acting. Yeah, I definitely have the I definitely have the face for it. Maybe something in radio. We're getting endurance. Yeah, fair enough. I thought they were gonna work here. They have another goddamn endurance. At least they had to pitch cast that one. All right, I guess I pass some. Did I start streaming with or without a cam? With a cam. I always, it always kind of felt like that was part of it. Part of the point. You better believe this is a cauldron deck. Ooh, I like the idea of cauldron eating opposing strangle roots. Yeah, so not blocking that to play around opposing bowmasters which is also why they keep making the attack home that's kind of why i put them on bowmaster last game last uh, turn even if they don't have one in hand they can cord for one No, I meant to do stuff. Got my triggers confused. That's all right. I just want them to gain more life before that happened. I the opponents to endurance me, so I can get my blood hardest back. <laughs> so, we could tutor up Grist, I guess. Kill some. Cord really should read all zones, I agree. Opponent's wondering why I didn't get endurance to shuffle the blood artist back in. 
He definitely doesn't let you tap your creatures to pay for it, though. String root. A little obnoxious in that I can't, uh... Yeah, tough spot, hum. Heck of a card that shield rid. Tyvar and Tyvar Tyvar would be the rip. Actually, Tyvar wouldn't even do it, right? Because I like lose two life per card drawn. Would only gain one, right? I guess I could fizzle some of my Yogmoth triggers to gain some life. Okay. Yeah, that would be a bold attack if Shieldred served there. Because a Patrick can make a death touching. On top of just, you know, making a 2 2 young wolf to trade. Yeah, I guess we just untap first, Tom. Huh? And then we get like one draw here. If I hit Shieldred, I'll only have two proliferates, which is not enough to kill Shieldred. So I guess I hit Bowmaster, hum. And this kills us, drawing a card. Takes, we would take three, red four. Oh, I lose a life to do it. Yeah, you're right, I am dead. Forgot about that. Well, in that case, I'm dead regardless. Yeah, but CG not saving me anyway. Hmm. Alright, I want in I want ooze. I think I want some endurances. And more bowmaster. Maybe pushes. Something like this. And then uh priest is probably just not where I want to be in this matchup, huh? They have a lot of cards that I just don't mind sacrificing. But then if I cut Priest, that makes Tyvar worse. A white horse. Oh, do I want this? I do want this, right? So without the Stitcher Supplier, Soul Cauldron's not going to be as consistent, but it can hit the opponent's things as well. And, like, just, like, eating creatures with Undying makes the Cauldron, like, kind of good in this matchup, I feel. I don't think we need to do the extra work to make it consistent. I, I would rather just, like, use my tournament entry fee to buy a case of soda than join a tournament with uh, Kitchen Finks in my deck. Not a fan of that card. I also remember in Kitchen Finks for a staple, yeah. I built a zoo deck once um, in the Deathrite Shaman era of things. And I was really, really happy with Deathrite versus the pod deck. Because the thing that made like actual aggro kind of bad in that time period was pod just being able to tutor up Kitchen Finks and then reset them over and over again. So the fact that Deathrite Shaman was a source of damage and could also just like exile a Kitchen Finks was so good in that match matchup specifically. This opener seems good, right? Am I a Mountain Dew guy? I am, Basic Swamps. Mountain Dew is going to kill me. Um, yeah, no cap. You could Wall of Roots into Bowmaster here. I I don't really know which is better. Change of Grist feels good. Something gets us. Something does get us. It's it's like strange to be like certain though. You know, like certain of how you're gonna die. I'm like very certain that's how I'm gonna die. I 
maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, maybe just playing like the Wall of Roots plus Bowmasters and then like and Fatal Push. So I can do all of it, right? And then I have like more stuff in play when I do play the Yogg, and I get to take more immediate value if they've got a removal spell. This way, if the Grist down ticks to sack the Young Wolf to kill my Yogg, um, at least they'll lose, actually lose the Young Wolf, right? Yeah, I think it'd be a lot further ahead if I'd sequenced it the other way. Played all my shit out. And then played the Yogg this turn. Cool. Hey, there we are. You think every instance should have code invoke? Yeah, you're probably right about that. Well, they're hellbent. We have a board and they don't. I think you just play this endurance, huh? We can fetch a dried over here. Well, let's just do that again. How do y'all feel about Necromancy in this matchup? Is it bad? It feels like we can turn to it and potentially like strip Yogs and just win. Like even on the draw. But maybe it's worse than just like having creatures. I don't know. Hey, basic swamp, six to thirty two months there. Certainly better on the play. Finally, we get to see if Agatha's Soul Cauldron does something in the mirror here. No one drop. I guess they were already on six. You play Blue Red Prowess and you always have a hard time versus Yogg. Do I have any tips? I do not. No. I'm not a Yogg expert. I've played against it a solid amount and I've played with it a bit. Um, And I haven't played a ton of Blue Red Prowess either. Sorry to, <laughs> sorry to be so incredibly useless, but...
yeah, this cauldron's come for your soul. Don't get paired against Yogg. Yeah, that might be it. That's the real trick, isn't it? This is fucking sweet. <laughs> now on their turn, we can use both of these as wall of omens too, and actually like cord for two if we want to. Hey Casper OV, thanks for the seventy two months. Sweet cube deck, yeah, right? Cord is bugged on Moto. The way that Cord is bugged with Wall of Omens on Moto is if it's the last counter, you can't do both. That doesn't matter here. Both of our things are tapped. We're not even tapping them the once. I did Mountain Mage. Thank you so much. You have no idea. <laughs> Spent years tracking down this watery grave. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I don't think I want a cord for two. I think I want a cord for Yogg, right? Oh shit, what up? Be punch, thanks for gifting a sub to Mountain Mage. Congrats, Mountain. I win, I win the match. So, Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Pretty good with that Grist card. Pretty good with Wall of Roots, too. That game made me want to play more Wall of Roots. Having Priest of Forgotten Gods and Grist under there would also be sweet, right? And so that the Priest is, like, spitting out tokens to sacrifice to it. <laughs> you don't understand it? So Soul Cauldron um, adds a 1-1 counter as part of its activated ability. And then all creatures with 1-1 counters have the abilities of creatures that are exiled underneath Soul Cauldron. So you tap it, you exile a creature, you put a 1-1 counter on something. Creatures with 1-1 counters have the abilities of all the creatures that are underneath it. So they gain more abilities as you keep exiling cards. And then more of your creatures get 1-1 counters because you're going along and activating multiple times. I don't love this opener. I don't, I don't think it's a mull, though. Grist is a creature, exactly. That's why they're getting Planeswalker loyalty. You do need to uptick it twice before you can downtick it. Because creatures, of course, don't start with Planeswalker loyalty. But they do get the, uh, the uptick ability. This might be, like, the stone worst matchup to keep a one-lander in against blue-red. Fulminator Mage. Fulminator Mage would be kind of hilarious, yeah. And you play, like, one. Not 
the best draw, huh? And then it tells the opponent that I'm low on lands too. So they know the target of the halfling. One's only at 12. They're in a Lamong deck, though. Probably, like, deceptively high life total. Kind of surprised they don't have Leyline or something. Don't love playing the Ignoble onto the, the Ren, but maybe it's correct, because then they lose the Ren. They also might be fine with the Ren taking heat here because they might just like have another have another copy handy. They are indeed a beanstalk gamer. I meant Omnath, I did mean Omnath. Wait, what just happened? <laughs> they copied the the ability. <laughs> Amazing. And what's the other side? Run into the battlefield, cause a triggered ability of permanent control. Choose an additional time. Well, that seems kind of good, huh? Solitude coming down. Drawing a card. Eating my stuff. Yeah, hard to win here with no stuff, right? When well, now my stuff dies to the Ren. So these Mites are coming in. The Force of Vigors are not. And Bowmaster is definitely coming in. Hmm. I think I like Tyvar's recursion ability here. Something like this. A lot of the opponent's removal spells are exile effects, so I think we almost need Supplier for Soul Cauldron to work. Yeah, let's cut the wall of roots, actually. It was rough. I mean, I don't think it's a great matchup, even if we hadn't kept a one lander and did nothing, right? <laughs> this ain't could fucking work out. Necromancy of the stock. I don't think necromancing uh, solitude's that bad. I think the deck loses a lot of a lot of potency if you do that. Yeah, you got me. I fucking hate this card. Halfling kind of like sets you up for fury, hum. I think it's correct though. So they have like a one for one removal spell. You still have three mana for a walker. Yeah, right, Allosaurus Alice. Even in paper, like you have to like activate it every turn. It just like slows down games. That's exactly um, why I dislike it. Priest of the Forgotten Gods, you say? Yeah, in my um, in my powered cube that I'm building, I put a um, Soul Guide Lantern in that slot, in the Relic slot. Also lets you loop Soul Guide Lantern with uh, Emery and Goblin Welder. 
Whereas Relic of Progenitus, he can't loop that way. No, I got my priest. Damn. I was just about to fill the graveyard real nice, too. Do blind down to Tarvar. Let's uptick Grist once first. If you downtick, you actually get to sack supplier. I have more options, but. Okay. Okay, where might's not nothing. They're just gonna crack relic next turn. Line binding. Exile two things. Car. Fury. Oh, I'm sorry, draw two cards, not exile two things. Then I have the doubler. <clears throat> Matibar. So we still have one might in here. If I top deck cord or something. Get my grist back. I guess I could just cord for the grist though. That's a juicy top deck. It's double beanstalk. Pitch casting solitude and leaving you up a card is fucking filthy. Why do they do that? Because they were going to get two triggers regardless. I, I don't think the order matters when they solitude there. If they are going to solitude. Omnath, play land. Oh, they didn't Omnath. Just casting Solitude, just stabilized anyway. Oh, that one's pretty good. Hey, dudes on Twitch, thanks for the raid. Hope you had a dope stream. I am well, thanks, Dugs. The great dudes. If any of y'all aren't following him, you should. Oh, thanks for firing up the shout out. They do have seven cards. We have functionally seven too with this Yogg. Kind of wondering if I should draw some cards right now. I feel like, yeah. I guess we're just gonna like lose some stuff to Relic. It's not the worst. Yeah, maybe I should have drawn Tata Land Drop so I could like find another orc. <clears throat> not the space for that. Hi, how, how are are you? I recommend looking at a deck list of amalg amalgamators, like a website. And get some idea of what other people are putting in their boards and your colors. Or you can go ask on like Reddit, you know, discussion forum. The stream's a little focused around what I'm doing here on in this game, right? I 
who's favored the opponent. Yeah, like every spell they play draws them two cards. So. <laughs> You always heard Yogg's great at grinding. It is. That doesn't mean that it's all automatically favored in grinding matchups, right? Yogg doesn't want to play against Fury. It doesn't want to play against Fury. It doesn't want to play against permanently, permanent exile effects. It doesn't want to play against infinite cards, infinite removal. The four-color deck gets to interact really favorably because they have not just Fury, but also Solitude. So they have all these free ways of interacting with Yogg to prevent Yogg from really popping off, doing the thing. Yeah, basic swamps. What's he uh what's he gaining life with without Omnath? Just solitude. Solitude beats. Oh, they're hex proofed. Sure. I think I might have seen him post that list on Twitter. Oh, not running ring. Sure, sure. They're going to lose two on their upkeep from the one ring. So this cord now. Am I supposed to let them untap? If I let, if I let them untap, then they could Veil of Summer me. If I cord now, they could for, um, Force Negation or whatever. I'm going to play it now. So they have to, like make a creature and then solitude it to not die to their own one ring here. I don't think they actually can survive now with the dress down in play. Like the solitude's in play, but another solitude won't be able to exile it to gain life. Well, I didn't think I was favored. <laughs> Collector Oath is, like, not the card that I want, right? It seems, like, extremely vulnerable to prevent them from drawing with the ring. And it turns off my Soul Cauldron and stuff. Maybe Cauldrons is not where I'm supposed to be at. With all the relics. Yeah, I kind of wonder if I should be boarding in Necromantia. Cut, like, Priest. Cut a tie Arm. I could also see playing Force of Vigor. Like, hit multiple bindings with it, maybe. It feels like I'm getting too, like, creature light doing this. Bringing the Vigors and the Necromanches. I'm just going to do one. You still need shit, right? You need shit to sacrifice and recur and stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe Eric. Or maybe a streamer with like a larger than a, with a brain larger than a donkey. I'm just stuck here with my little donkey brain doing my best. Trying to muddle it out. Fucking he -aw. Double Orc's kind of nice. First the card draw deck. I need a certificate that says I don't have donkey brains. Then I can show it to people. See? I'd like to besiege you stuff, but I think I just gotta play it. Gotta play two two drops here. I'm not actually sure which two two drops. Could double Bowmasters, could play Hapatra, apply more pressure in Bowmasters. Yeah, I like this Blood Artist version, too. It's so artsy. Hope I don't lose because I played out this Besiege you. Maybe I'm supposed to be double working here. The board's making me like the double force of vigor board in. Being Ren and Six Worst, just hitting random lands. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. All right. What do I do here? What do I do? I could just tag. Grist? Oh, I was going to eat Yogg. Oh, it is protection from itself, right? All right. How does it work with the work tokens? It just doesn't, right? Because they cancel each other out. Or does it actually happen? I guess I can try. See whether I get a snake or not. Oh, I did. Nice. pass. Can always draw more on their turn. I guess it's pass here.
So we could cord for two here. I get another um, Bowmaster, which I kind of don't hate. We could also go get a Young Wolf and just like draw more cards. If I get Bell Lancers, don't they just kill with the Fury? That's fine. <laughs> We're like on top of our Yogmoth. Cool. Well, maybe we were favored. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. In general, I would like to be playing a Fury deck against Yogmoth. I don't really know how it's that particular matchup is supposed to shake out because I haven't gone deep on either deck. Cool. Got him there, though, huh? Don't even need to combine it with Blister or anything. So in Pain or Goblin Engineer, I can just like bend that six drop. Yeah, Phyrexian, not Dreadnought. Phyrexian something, I don't know, maybe it is Dreadnought. Devourer, that's the one, yeah. One of those other D words. I get all the D confused, you know. Living End. Rug living end. Why do they call me Caleb D anyway? Let me tell you. Let me tell you, friend. Why they call me D? It's because I got a long last name, Durward. It starts with a D. That's why. Hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is not because of my extremely average size penis. That'd be nice, though. It'd be nice for the old peen to get some recognition, hum. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> nice. The double insect. The doubler. It's massive to someone. That's true. That's true. Shocking. Hmm. I think that they've got is that um counter creature on the stack or whatever. Not sure if I should let it hit this blood artist to try and play the Yog after sacking to the priest. Yeah, so that'll do that card. Oh, they're just cycling. They're just cycling in response. Okay. Okay, okay. Looks like I could have gotten Yogg down. I don't know if that would have been helpful or not. Life gain is cheat, except when I do it. Or did I put my turn, my land for the turn? I must have missed a land drop earlier. I wouldn't. I don't think I really want to play Grist here anyway. This is solid.
Five creatures in the bin. Hardcast Endurance. Nope. <laughs> I guess sacking the Blood Artist was bad versus this specifically, hum. Oh, the Stitcher Supplier is going to mill me before the Grist, before the Grist trigger resolves. <laughs> I love playing graveyard decks against Living End. Yeah, and then Yogg plus uh, Blood Artist just cleans up here. They had a pretty good start! They had a pretty good start. Priest of Forgotten Gods did some work. Blood Artist did some work. The Self Mill did some work. Oh, maybe Bull Masters are good against all the cycling. Or are they bad? I don't know if they're good or bad. Maybe the Necromancer is too much. Yeah, this is too much stuff. Pretty fun when all the cards you played were important. Yeah, right, Daggerhawk? Those are rewarding games for sure. You build a deck with all these like pieces to work together, and then it shows up and works. Oh, yeah, I got something here. A minus tie barn. There's just not much, there's just not space, you know, for like bowmasters and all this other shit. So I have to decide between like shaving yogs or cutting necromancia. I got like three of this stack, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll just keep it at like one or two Bowmasters. Yeah, I'm gonna play Necromancia on the play, but not the draw. It's possible they should be it. I just, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to cut. Be a little iffy on the play. It's a little iffy on the draw still. Oh yeah, see Max. And then next turn we can double Young Wolf and set up for like Cord for Ooze or something. I don't know. I guess if we hit lane number three, we could Cord for Endurance. A little bit worried about them endurancing me if I go too hard on suppliers and such. I guess I shouldn't shouldn't have the fear, hum. Oh, the uses in the bin, so I can't cord for that one anyway. Legacy kill with Soul Cauldron, just for Exine Drower on a creature that's unblocked. But you can also uh, exile, like, Ballista, right? So I kind of want a cord for another Stitcher Supplier, which would be like, really playing into an Endurance from them hard. If I let this resolve, then I can cord after the Living End is resolved. And I would have two Endurances, a Scavenging Ooze, and a Priest versus their four cards. And I'd probably just cord up a, um, a Young Wolf or something. 
Not that exciting. What else would I get if not a stitching? That's what I'm thinking about right now. We could get a blood artist, because like priest is coming back in. Yeah, I think I'll let this resolve. All these fucking young wolves come back. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, I guess I just go get a yog then, right? Oh my god, something will enough. Yeah, we need a blood artist or a cord, right? So the Soul Cauldron exiled Grist from my graveyard. Then every um, every loop, I can also spit out a one one. Be like another like twelve one ones here. So I guess I just do that, huh? <laughs> but it's like, nope, done, done with this. Yeah, and so let me keep going, going back to drawing, and then um, if you draw the the blood artist naturally, the priest can still generate two black mana for you. And then if you draw a cord, obviously we have enough green creatures. Calden's very fun, yeah, very fun and very good. The fact that it's, like, incidental graveyard hate for your opponent is, like, kind of messed up. Like, it's also an, an, a licensed hearse. Like, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right, Mark Chalice. When they uptick, they don't start with loyalty. You're telling me something that you could have... <laughs> I'm literally playing the card <laughs> in front of you and doing the things that you're describing. <sighs> you like Cauldron and Heliod? Oh, yeah. Get back, like, spike feeders and stuff. No check with the judge required. <laughs> yeah, someone might have said that, but it wasn't me. I responded to a comment... The creatures don't start with loyalty because they're creatures. It's like really warm in my room. I'm gonna go up the AC. I'm like sweating pretty bad. Yeah, for whatever reason, my AC just wasn't running. So it's like supposed to be in the 70s and it's in like the. Um, 80s. My my t-shirt's starting to, like, weigh on me, you know? I guess I just kill that, huh?
And then I'll just play Bullmasters here. Has to be a creature to get a counter, Doom Lord. Let's play Nasmo. Now spell bomb's pretty important. I really want to kill this Asmo, but I do lose my Grist. I think we force them to pop the Nihil Spell Bomb without being able to use the mana, though. And then we can cord for a new Grist or Yogg or something. So right now on board, we can only cord for two. So I think I just attack. I think we want to be able to cord for at least Grist, huh? And next turn we can actually do Yogg. Exiling Grist does work with Cauldron. It's a creature, BK Kids Club. We've been doing it all stream. <laughs> Why do you think I targeted Grist? Why do you think my opponent cracked a Nihil spell bomb to very specifically prevent me from getting Grist under there? I win! We Yeah, we're in a great spot there. Um, I think what I do with Yogg is I sack the Wall of Roots and get it under Cauldron, so then all of my creatures with 1-1 counters on them can do Wall of Roots mana. However good Cauldron is, this could be a matchup for Collector Oaf. I think I'm just supposed to bring in the Disenchants. Doesn't feel like a Bowmaster matchup, huh? But maybe Fatal Push, maybe Ooze. Your wish was granted. That's the perfect way to look at it, Kids Club. How's the deck treating me? Very well, Side Norna. Very well. Mm. Almost as good as this bull semen. That joke works better if I'm not holding a mug jug. A, a, a milk jug. A mug. <laughs> a milk jug. I don't know what I'm supposed to cut. Maybe I just have to trim back on priests and tie bars again. I think priest looks good here, though. Let's actually trim back on suppliers. They might have more graveyard hate post board, which makes supplier a little weaker. Yeah, real solid chance that I'm supposed to be bringing in Collector Oaf. Despite the mites, despite the Soul Cauldron. Oh man, my room's already starting to feel cooler. I wonder why it does that sometimes. Every once in a while my AC just like doesn't run. And I have to like manually input like, yo, please, <laughs> please do the thing. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot, Barbar.
No! Rude. I think if I should kill this saga or not. I guess, huh? I fucking guess. Maybe too much respect for the Steel Seeker aim. Ah, I could have gotten two. Potentially. Respecting the orcs. Noise. Am I supposed to put Asmo to one? Or am I supposed to fucking fuck up this goose? I don't know. Interesting. Well, I'll just kill that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm supposed to hit here. I just letting them on tab. Let's play another work. Yeah, I don't know. Which is correct to hit these three. Yeah, that's not bad. So I play my stuff. They're gonna kill Yogg in response. I could discard the Yogg. Make Asmo a one-one. I feel like I'm just supposed to put my things anyway. So it resolve? Okay. Oh, it can't. Asmo can't, because Asmo's a fucking human. I'm so fucking dumb. This whole game I've just been like, why are they killing my yard moth? I've played so much I've played so much Asmo. I've played this matchup from the other side. <laughs> and I'm still just like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Why why haven't they killed my creature with protection from their creature? Oh ding. I understand now. Okay. Well, I feel better about this uh, game state. Stupid Moto not breaking the rules. Yeah, imagine playing this in paper and your opponent just is like, also doesn't realize and they're just like targeting your Yogg. And you brain fart and let it die. Just get destroyed. Hey, hey, hey.
I guess I can attack, huh? Even if Asmo wasn't human, it wouldn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> cause, y'all can't target itself or deal itself damage. You got it, friend. Cock, cock. Just thinking. I could use this to turn the Yogg into a Mana Dork here and then have one more Ooze activation. I think I'd rather attack, huh? If they attack with the orc here, I activate the Soul Cauldron, targeting their Gilded Goose, put a 1-1 counter on the Blood Artist, then the Blood Artist would then gain the Scavenging Goose ability. It would activate. I'd have, I'd have a 2-3 to eat their thing in combat. Anyway. Four no so far. We only had the Priest... The, we only had the Priest uh, pop off in, like, one match. That was against Living End. They were pretty strong. On the draw. I guess I'm going to five. It's a good five. The combined guild mage? Is that what it's called? The combined guild mage? Tron aim. The people that played Yogg at the Pro Tour were not happy with all the Tron around. I don't get a goodie film. That's like a lot of mana and then tapping and who cares? Soul Cauldron adds 1-1 counters to things for free. The creatures you're making with Grist like, have summoning sickness. Unless I'm missing something about what you're suggesting. If I two twos, why? This does this doesn't look infinite, friend. You're spending two mana and then tapping to do this. Oh, you're saying you activate it before you ever activate. Sure, 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 sure. You you activate it before you ever activate Grist. 
In my brain, I was thinking that, like, the creature from Soul Cauldron had to be the thing doing the thing, but... I feel like Grumgully's better. Just because you don't have to spend two mana on the turn that you're doing it, right? But you're right that it does work with it. Work with a cauldron while Grumgully doesn't. A couple interesting ideas. It's not quite what I was hoping for. Yeah, right? Metallic Mimic had Changeling. It'd be a much more interesting card in a lot of decks, huh? I do not, Bremner. I do not want to put Pestermite anywhere near my deck. I think the really cool thing about Soul Cauldron is that you can get things rolling before before those big expensive nonsense cards, right? Gigi already self combos. Yeah, I could have besieged the relic. But I think I need to hit a Tron land, right? It does. What about limes? These relics so annoying. Don't love that. Don't love that. Yeah, I think we just lose now. Maybe Coopin. Uh, the persist cards don't really work with Soul, Soul Cauldron, or whatever. Wormcore Legend's beatable, but I mean, something a, a smidge better than this, huh? Draws need to be a smidge better. It is a matchup for Collector Oath, yeah. Just try and cheese them. I think it's pass. We attack and try and clear Karn. They dismember. Karn lives. Upticks. We like court for something shitty. Yeah, that's right. I don't have a card in my hand. Take that, Karn. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, maybe I should have shrank that worm some, hum, so the game less. Like, I, I would still be at 13, but they'd be at, like, 23 instead of 25. I don't know. We'll see what I draw.
Ugly. Not the draws I needed, I don't think. I was really hoping to combo here, you know. Even with the relic in play, and like draw a lot of cards, get into a spot where we can, you know, draw a lot of cards. We didn't even force them to pop the relic. Pretty bad spot. Pretty stock J Dub. Usually there's a one up in the sideboard. Can't even activate my Power Stone. Yeah, I think we need to scoop here. I'm gonna force a bigger. You can't actually sack a Haywire Might if there's a Karn in play. Then the answers to Karn are good. That's supposed to be bowmasting. Priest still good with tie arm. Yeah, kind of hated um, actively milling myself into the relics. Doesn't even if you find like a tie bar or something to rebuy a blood artist, like a key piece. Still the relic handy. Or bringing in Collector Oath anyway. So, like, Soul Cauldron's just gonna get worse. Yeah, you Necromantia for uh, Urza's Tower in this matchup. Generally, goody fill. Yeah, I don't love these priests, but I feel like they're not, not like worse than Endurance or whatever. Maybe they are. He yeah, has a few cantrips, huh? iPod on, and then the ring. Let me send this back, right? A single besiege you doesn't make the hand keepable. Not even a stone rain. There we go. I don't really play, want to play besiege you as a land, so I'm just going to bend it to draw later in the matchup. Morning, Emma. How's life in the greatest of Britons? You excited about next month? I'm fucking excited. Actually, uh. Actually, built a cube. I don't know if I'm going to be lugging it around or whatever. Maybe on one of the days. If I don't make Sunday, <laughs> I can bring it to the event and do side things. That'd be cool. Be more organized in a draft one of the days for afterwards. I don't know. You said you're bringing popper decks, right? I have popper zombies that are currently in like a few different pieces strewn about in different <laughs> different locations. Oh, you're bringing Dan Dan? Nice. I've only watched people play Dan Dan.
I wonder what the mites are in for. Oh, they think I'm like full combo with the the two mana artifact thing. So the mites are there to to snag it, I guess. Meanwhile, I'm like boarding them out because there's all these relics. Amazing. Stonebrain's in here to probably cheese Yog. Pretty normal stuff. Two Ulamogs, one Ugin, three O stones, three Karn, two Liberated. Two Liberated must be because of the uptick in the mirror after the Pro Tour, huh? Anyway. Oh, brutal. Yeah, I found out my the, the AC in my house wasn't working. Oh, I should have. Well, this is fine. Just like straight up wasn't doing its thing. So I changed like I was it was up in the eighties. I usually have it in like the mid seventies. So I was just down here, like, sweating, <laughs> shirt drenched, like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, I could have corded for Oaf to keep them off of green mana. I think that's probably better than running out the Yogg, in retrospect. Now they've got them, and now they can Sylvan, and... Well, Oaf can still turn off the One Ring. It's still a thing that I want to grab, huh? I was thinking about getting Grist and, like, getting my draw engine going, but it's probably better to, like, turn off more of their deck. Do you prefer 66 or below? Yeah, it's too cold. It's too cold for me. Pondering on a couple of wool cards to add to the cube. Yeah. I have a couple in mind, despite it being Mostly a typical powered cube. I'm trying out that Hearth Spirit. Where you can adventure to like draw two cards, then play it as a four or five, costing one less for each thing in your graveyard. I think it'll play out kind of seasoned pyromancery, but I don't actually know that, right? Because I haven't tried it. Do use Necromancia for Karn? Feels hard to lose if we do that. He said self jinxing lame. Which Karn is it? It's like the great creator, right? Yeah. One ring's turned off by Collector Oaf. I don't want to name that one. Just give them a zombie token. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't get them two zombies, huh? Playing them just a fog, sure. I also can't target them with Priest this turn. I was just about to do that too. I should have drawn some cards here. Like, cure the board. Like, I might have drawn a young wolf or something to get out. Liberator bust? Yeah. I mean, they can play Worm Coil Engine, but Worm Coil Engine doesn't matter here. I don't think I even saw Dismembers or anything. Capetra?
Yeah, Cauldron Yarg. Who's dead, right? I guess this is an infinite. Do I just pass then? Because I lose two life for each iteration. Or I'm sorry, I lose two creatures for each iteration. I only ping them for one. I think it's pass. I don't think there's anything they get do to meme. I was just trying to kill if I had a kill. Needs a young wolf in there or something. If I was a little bit better with the deck, then maybe I could have had like enough snake tokens at the end to cord up a young wolf and get there. If I wasn't like thinking about everything that I needed. Yeah, that's fine. And now to be one ring, one ring protection. Two turn. <laughs> I don't think so, Sir Fink. Doesn't fucking matter here, does it? If it ends, ever ends up mattering, then I'll play the worst card. But like in matchups where you're, both your and the opponent's creatures are dying, blood, art, blood artists seems so much better. I don't think always yielding Young know, Wolf does anything. This is a new thing each time. I should just be sagging four things with them only at three. Oh, she went up. Hey, Jombie. Thanks for the sob. Thanks for 25 months there. Well, that was certainly better than the first game, hum. It feels if you, like, if you fast extract <laughs> the Urzatron, then that deck's a lot worse, hum. I was surprised not to see Dismembers in their deck, unless they were in there, but I dismissed them. I think I'm supposed to mulligan and take a peek for the extraction. This is like not a bad hand, obviously. I don't know. Double Bowmasters might be good against one ring. They also might just like do nothing. Do you go to five? There's a lot of cards that make this hand kind of sweet. Cord for Oath. A lot of live draws here. What five card hand would we be looking for? Mana Dork into Extraction. What happens if we whiffle on that? I don't think this hand's like better than the six card hand, but it's not that much worse. Looks like they're just going to natural me. I 
Ah, well, that's not Tron. Find expedition map, play expedition map, pass. Chromatic star, shame. Kind of hoping that's relevant. Um, if you play a red source for this pirate spell bomb, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just getting yog right, and there's no no reason to wait on this. I've answered that question a lot, something idiot. Um, my experience against the One Ring has been that you can pass the turn and kill them on their turn. And creatures dying makes Blood Artist pretty good, huh? Need an untapped land here, untapped green source, so I can besiege them off of Tron, which I'd like to do. We got another couple draws. God damn it. Not even a green source uh, to pitch endurance here. Get another two cards. I guess it's Blooming Marsh Pass, huh? I'm not saying my fucking oaf, right? That could have gone better. I mean, you're supposed to sack the young wolf, have like one more draw towards an untapped green source. Like right now, Ulamog's a pretty sick out for them. Well, they're tanking. They might just be tanking on what they want to target with Ulamog. <laughs> Only seven mana available, so they can't get anything too juicy here. A little bit of a time trouble on my part, huh? Should be enough to close, but it's like barely enough. All right, Karn, what you got? Eight drop to hand, pass turn. Eight drop to hand, pass turn. You love to see it. You got it.
just going to attack. I think endurance is better. If that's my plan, hum. Yeah, just proliferate the, the Grist for the alt here. I played the Orc here, so I got F6. Oaf is really good against the One Ring, yeah. Nice little 5-0. -oh. Nice little 5-0. -oh. So this deck was good, huh? Yeah, the uh, the whole Tyvar Priest Stitcher Supplier angle in the deck might just be wrong. We did recruit some things with Tyvar. The idea behind Tyvar and Stitcher Supplier is that you're doing some like self milling so that the cauldron's turned on if things aren't dying. If your opponent's playing like exile removal, that sort of thing. Chris is doing a little bit of incidental milling too, and then it does also hit your opponent's things. So maybe you don't actually need all the supplier priest stuff. Supplier was decent sometimes. Tyvar was decent sometimes. Priest only came up in like one match. That could just be like the run that we had too, though. Like priest is obviously a good one to put under Soul Cauldron. The thing is, in this deck, like Wall of Roots is good to put under Soul Cauldron. You know what I mean? So all your like creatures with one-one counters can like just spit out a bunch of mana. I think it's probably correct to just like play more typical cards there. Play the full four wall of roots, for example. GG's Logan. Thanks for the match. Good luck in uh, future leagues, obviously. After that first game, I was. Uh... I'm <laughs> sorry.